Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some really amazing PS2 emulation on Mac. So I'm actually using EtherSX2. This was originally designed for Android, but since it works with ARM-based devices, over on the official website you can hit up the development section and they offer a few different versions for ARM-based systems. And obviously they have one for Mac. So this will work on any ARM-based Mac, if you got an M2 chip, an M1 chip, an M1 Pro, whatever they're calling their ARM-based chips nowadays. Ether SX2 will work on it, and even on the M1 chips, emulation here is absolutely amazing. I'm at 1440p right now, unfortunately at 4K we do get some skips, but there are a few games that will play at 4K. I'd say 1440p is the way to go with this right here. I personally haven't been able to test this on a Pro chip or an M2 chip, but I'm pretty sure you could hit 4K resolutions with most of the games that are compatible with the emulator. So yeah, I've got this running on an M1 MacBook right now, and in this video I'm going to show you how to get this up and running, set up your BIOS, get your games imported, and even set up Bluetooth controllers. I'm using an Xbox controller right now. If you take a look at these little bar graphs here, these are actually built into Mac OS. This is the activity monitor, and unfortunately if I go full screen with it, they just go behind. But we do have a lot of information on screen from EtherSX2 itself. So the first thing I'm going to do here is show you how to get this up and running, and then we're going to test out some games by the end of the video. So if you want to skip right to that to see how it performs, check out the chapters listed in the video description. Okay, so obviously the first thing you're going to need is an ARM-based Mac. You can use an iMac, you can use a MacBook, a MacBook Air. Next thing I would highly recommend is using a controller while playing your games. Now it is possible to use the keyboard, but I've tested one of these Switch controllers from Power A. I've also tested the Xbox controller and a PS4 controller. It'll also work with a PS3 controller or a PS5 controller or any wired controller. Really, if you got a controller that'll either plug in or connect over Bluetooth, you can probably get it working with Ether SX2 on these Macs. Alright, so now it's time to move on to the software. So first things first with this, you're going to need some PS2 games. You can rip your own or you could do a quick Google search. This will support .gz files. These are kind of compressed just to make them a little smaller. Or I actually prefer using ISOs. So if I go into one of these folders here, it's a .iso. I can't tell you where to get them. I would highly recommend ripping your own games from your own discs, but you can do some searching and find whatever you need. I've got a bunch to choose from right here, Sly Cooper. This is going to be a .iso or .gz. Once you have your games ready to go, we're also going to need a PS2 BIOS. I've got mine on my desktop here in a folder called BIOS. And there's several to choose from, but the most basic PS2 BIOS is known as the SCPH10000.bin. This is a basic PS2 file and it does work really well. You can pick up a Japanese, European, or higher versions of the US BIOS, but this is the one that I'll be using in this video, and we will need this to get EtherSX2 up and running. So we've got our hardware, we've got our games, we've got our BIOS, now it's time to download EtherSX2. Link for this website will be in the description, this is the official EtherSX2 website, EtherSX2.com. And scrolling through here, you don't see much about any other platforms except for Android, until we go to download. So you can see they have open testing, closed testing, and if we go down here, you can see that we have desktop. Now they also offer this for Linux desktops using ARM chips, and one thing that I would like to do is test it out on the 3588 soon, but uh, I know it's not going to run as well as it does on this M1 Mac. And Mac is exactly what we're talking about in this video. So we're going to go over here. We're going to download the latest release. You can check the dates here. It's going to be a zip file, show in folder, I'm just going to unzip it, and we now have it. You can actually put this in your applications folder if you want to. I'm going to drag it right here to my dock, that way I have easy access to it, and it's going to stay in my downloads folder, but you can put this anywhere you'd like. And now we're going to go ahead and open up EtherSX2. And since Apple is really strict about security, it's not going to allow us to open it up the first time, so we're going to choose OK. We're going to go to System Preferences, which is basically our Mac settings, Security and Privacy, General, and if we take a look down here, Allow Apps Downloaded From, you can change this by unlocking, but it's going to show us the last unknown app that we tried to open up, which is EtherSX2. It was blocked from use, 
we're going to choose open anyway. It's going to bring up one more window. We'll choose open. So it'll give us a quick little walkthrough here. We need to add our game directory. Mine's on my desktop in a folder called PS2. So I'm just going to choose this directory. It's going to scan each individual folder in there. Yes. It's populated all of my games. Now, if we try to run one, let's do uh, God of War. We're missing our BIOS. So we have to tell EtherSX2 where our BIOS is. From up top here, we're going to go to Settings, BIOS, and now we can tell EtherSX2 where our BIOS is. You can place this anywhere you'd like. Browse, Desktop, BIOS. Mine's right in here. It's found that SCPH10,000.bin. This is the BIOS we're going to be using. Close. And now you can start playing a game. But there's still some settings that we can mess around with, and we haven't configured our controller yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So like I mentioned, this will work with basically any Bluetooth controller. With the latest updates to Mac OS, controller support is pretty good now. I'm going to be using a PS4 controller or a DualShock 4 controller. I'm going to put it in pairing mode by holding the PlayStation button and the share button at the same time. With other controllers, this is going to be much different, but we're going to go up to Bluetooth, Bluetooth preferences, and if it's not listed up here, you can always go to your system preferences here and find Bluetooth from there. It's already detected that DualShock 4 controller. We're going to connect. It's connected to my Mac now. But there's one last thing we need to do here from preferences. We need to allow EtherSX2 to use Bluetooth. Again, Apple security. We're going to back up. We're going to go to security and privacy again. We'll go to privacy. Find Bluetooth. And now we're going to add EtherSX2. So we'll choose this little plus mark. Mine's in my downloads folder. We'll have to restart it. It'll automatically do it. But now EtherSX2 can see our Bluetooth controllers. So we're going to set that up real quick. Very easy to do. Settings, controllers, and from here, controller port one. We want this to act as a DualShock 2 controller because obviously we're playing PS2 games. Automatic binding, and now we're going to choose our PS4 controller. This is the one that we can see now over Bluetooth. SDL0 PS4 controller might be named different but it's actually set up. It's ready to go. We just did an automatic binding, but if for some reason you want to remap your controller, it's very self-explanatory. So let's say our D-pad, we'll just press the corresponding button on our controller and so on and so on. So you can totally remap this. We'll choose close. So now we've got EtherSX2 configured to run on our Mac and use our Bluetooth controller. You can start playing your games right now, but one thing I always like to do is upscale my games just to make them look much better. So we're going to go back to settings, we're going to go to graphics. From graphics here, our renderer on these M1 Macs, you can always experiment with Vulkan or Metal, but Metal is really the way to go on these ARM-based Macs if you're using an M2 or an M1. So we're just going to make sure our renderer is set to Metal. From rendering, internal resolution, native PS2, we can go up to 1440p on the M1 chip, and I'm pretty sure the M2 chip would handle 4K. But since I'm on an M1, I'm just going to go up to 1440p or 2K. And really, when it comes down to it, everything that I've tested so far works very well the way I have it set up right now. But there's more settings in here. If you hover over them, it'll give you a description at the bottom. So if you do run into an issue with a certain game, there may be a fix in here. You just need to kind of search through. But so far, I've tested about 12 different games, and I haven't run into any issues using the metal back end at 1440p. I mean, I'm getting really great performance. And there is a way to display all of your system information on screen while you're playing a game. That's going to be under on-screen display. So we can show our FPS, CPU usage, statistics, version info, show speed, resolution, GPU usage. So this is built into EtherSX2, or you can use the activity monitor, which is built into Mac, from here, we'll go to Window, CPU Usage, GPU History, and this will just give you some more information. And remember, 
You can set this to keep CPU windows on top, but if you go total full screen with it, these are going to shut down. But the built-in information does come in really handy, especially show speed and FPS. That way you know if the game's running at full speed or not. Alright, so let's go ahead and start up a game. We'll go with Ratchet and Clank. And by the way, from the settings, you can actually set this up to automatically go full screen when you start a game. But I've got mine turned off right now. I've got the information on screen. As you can see, we've got that metal back end or the metal renderer. We've got the resolution, CPU usage, GPU usage. And on this M1, we should be getting some really good performance. But yeah, this works really well and it looks absolutely amazing at 1440p. Right now, I'm actually using the built-in QuickTime recorder, so it is taking a little bit of GPU and CPU usage. But even with that going, we've got full speed at 1440p. And I would highly suggest testing this out if you're into emulation and you have one of these ARM-based Macs. Now, the last thing here, saving your game. So if you press Escape on the keyboard, it'll bring up our quick menu. We can save state right here. Or every time you exit a game or try to shut a game down, it'll ask you if you want to save you can go ahead and save from there. The internal save states also work for each game, so if you get to a save point in the game, you can start right back from there also. But I like using these save states because you can save anywhere in the game. And one thing I haven't been able to get working here is box art with this version. I'm sure it'll be fixed in the future, but I personally can't get box art to display right now. And keep in mind, this is still in alpha. I mean, this is an early build, but it's working absolutely amazingly. So yeah, I highly recommend trying this out. It's just really awesome to see great PS2 emulation on these ARM-based Macs. And uh, real quick, I did want to show off a little bit of gameplay here. I've got a few games to test. Here's God of War 3, Metal Back End, 1440p, only things I've changed here. Runs really well like this. Here's Sly Cooper, a little over 1440p. Instead of choosing 4x resolution, I went up to 5 because uh, even 4K was pretty decent on here. I did have a few hiccups every once in a while. But taking it down to 5x allows you to play this at a steady 60fps. But when it comes to the easier to emulate games like Crash Bandicoot and the Tony Hawk series, 4K is totally possible on the M1. Metal back end, 4K resolution, really great performance. Another one I always like to test is Soul Calibur 3. Some x86 systems give me issues with this, even higher end systems. Really comes down to the emulator itself, but with that we're using PC SX2. And I know that Ether SX2 is kind of based on that. But whatever they've done here is kind of magical with these ARM chips. So overall, really loving Ether SX2 running on this Apple Silicon. And uh, right now we've got Shadow of the Colossus, 1440p. But on a higher end Apple Silicon, we could go up. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And I'd also like to know your thoughts on seeing this running on this Apple Silicon. Before, we had PC SX2 and it did run decently. But in my opinion, since this was tailor-made for ARM chips, I think we're getting much better performance here with Ether SX2. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and like always, thanks for watching.